I want to talk about two teachers who really, in their own ways, made a big difference in my life. I'm going to tell you about a high school teacher and a college teacher. And the high school teacher I want to talk about is named John Burkhart. He is still teaching. It's 2024 when we do this. And he has been for several decades teaching at Georgetown Day High School in Washington, D.C. He teaches English and creative writing, and he has also done a lot of things, including math. But when I experienced his teaching in the late 1980s, what I saw was someone who was tremendously devoted to including everyone, to making the classroom an active and democratic and participatory space where everyone knew that we had something to learn. No one came in thinking that we knew everything, but everyone's voice mattered. And making the classroom a space of active and engaging and rewarding reading and listening, and at the same time a space of paying attention to literature, a space finally where students' own creative writing, the poetry and the fiction that students were working on, was taken just as seriously in that space as the writing of Plath or Yeats or Dickinson or Frederick Douglass or Chaucer. That really became a model for me, not just in terms of what I learned, but in terms of how to teach. Now, another teacher who set me on a lot of paths that I hope I remain on uh, is Helen Vendler, who quite recently retired from teaching here at Harvard. She was here for a number of years, including when I was an undergrad. and. She set a, an example simultaneously of tremendously informed and responsible and thoughtful attention to poems, treating poems simultaneously as objects of intellectual depth and as representations of feeling, of persons, of ways to be in the world. So that if Helen is reading a Keats Ode or a Wallace Stevens poem, with you, you aren't just seeing how all the words fit together and what claim the poem advances, you are seeing what it's like to be the person the poem implies, whether that person is shy or sad or dejected or hopeful or resigned, and how the words point at each other and at the person inside them. At the same time, and this is something that, as with many teachers, you have to know the person to really see. You have to see the person in the classroom to see. It's not something that anyone can bring across on the page. Helen remains someone who's tremendously kind and attentive and able to meet students where they are and who wants to listen as well as to speak. So she's been a role model as a writer, as a critic, and as a teacher as well.